All right. So um, as you guys have been building up a little bit of experience with the transformation tools, understanding the difference between, let's say, an all at once versus an incremental development uh, in terms of algorithms, one uh, really interesting uh, paradigm to begin to think through is um, the lens of morphine. Uh, typically what that is referred to as is a uh, kind of transformation, um, but it's a very specific type of transformation. And in this example, I specifically want to um, show you guys a little bit about how to work with components um, and how to leverage um, the use of morphing techniques to transform uh, those components. That's a kind of typical um, instantiation or kind of proliferation of units where um, the unit deforms by way of the uh, surface or the, uh, the substrate to which it's um, morphed. Before we get too, too far along, what we want to do is you know, make sure that we really understand what morphing is. And really the, the core of what's going on there is that it's a smooth transformation um, of one entity into another. This is typically achieved through the sampling of a base um, as well as a target space and then kind of coordinating the uh, transformation of the object through those two spaces. And we'll see how that plays out in a couple of different um, examples. Now this is your typical, again, uh, kind of example of, of a simple component um, morphing, uh, transitioning, right? from the left to the right. And what you see in the middle is really a, a series of transformations um, or steps as you move from the left here over to the right. Now, um, we're talking about components and really the, the reason why we are referring or, or are interested in using components is because they're really a fundamental aspect of the way that you think uh, whenever you're working in a parametric environment. Um, seeing that parametric models, or I guess in Grasshopper we can call them definitions, they're essentially large assemblies of uh, many smaller parts. So what we'd like to do is to start um, with a very simple modeling exercise um, so that we can all be on the same page in terms of how to uh, develop a, a component that would work with um, this type of transformation. So I'm going to bounce over here to Rhino. And um, in the files that we distributed, there is a, a Rhino file saved as um, R4. So that is in the Rhino 4 format, uh, for those of you who are not using Rhino files. And if you open up this file, you'll see that there is, I'm just going to bounce over here to top view really quick, a couple of, of things going on. The first one is that you'll see we have a square. Okay, and this is a dashed line to really serve the purpose of communicating that it's a reference. And then within that square, uh, there are some things happening. Now, the reason why we want to use a square as a reference is because when we start to talk about morphing, part of the definition is that we are going to be using a base space and a target space or a reference space and a target space to be able to facilitate the transformation or the blending from one state to another. So building your component on, uh, from a square underlay or reference will ensure that you're thinking through the requirements of that reference in target space. Now specifically the target space will be derived from first using a surface and um, subdividing its UV space and then second um, by actually using uh, something called the twisted box which we'll get into in just a little bit. So what I typically like to do uh, when I'm starting to work with uh, designing a little component is that I first draw a, a reference. So I'm going to make a layer. I already have one in the file called reference, um, activate it, and then use my rectangle tool. I mean, notice I'm just snapping to my grid here. Uh, 
If you don't have your grid snaps on, I, I definitely recommend that you turn them on down here at the bottom. I also have ortho on um, just to make sure that uh, I'm snapping orthogonally. And I'm going to click. Now, now that I have this uh, reference, I'm just going to turn my grid um, back off uh, so it's a little bit easier to see. And um, we can see that we have a square here. Now, the idea behind uh, my component is that I really want to define one quadrant of my component and then use something like a polar array or a mirror um, in order to facilitate the rest of the um, development of my component. So let's see how we can do that. Now, my preferred method of modeling is I like to model the least amount of geometry that I possibly can, and then I use compound transformations to be able to uh, finish out the model. So typically, I'll just make a quick scale. I'm going to type in scale. I'm going to say, yes, make a copy. And I'm going to pick the lower left corner of my square to scale. Now, if you're not getting this snap, you can always turn on the end point and uh, ensure that it is snapping uh, from the end here. Now, I'm going to type in 0.5. Confirm and hit enter. So within my square, I now have one quadrant defined. And this allows me to begin to develop um, a kind of response or a kind of component. Now, again, uh, I'm going to go ahead and make my component layer active. And I'm just going to take this uh, square that I just drew, and I'm going to scale it once again. This time I'm going to um, get the transform scale from the, uh, the menu up here. And I'm going to pick the top right corner of this guy and just use 0.5 again. Great. Now I have this guy right here. All right, this is going to be uh, really the, the geometry that I use to design my component. So I'm going to right click on my layer, my component layer, and uh, just tell this to change object to layer. All right, now I'll go ahead and lock my reference layer so I'm not selecting it, and I just have this guy turned on. Okay, so edit points. The curve um, is obviously made up of a few different things, um, control points as well as edit points, um, and then line segments. And really what I want to be operating on um, here are the edit points. And you can see here from the menu, uh, right above the text object, you have edit points, and to the right you have control points. You turn that on, we can see that we can start to move these guys around. Right? And uh, this will facilitate uh, the kind of initial design of um, this component. All right. Now, with this now modified, um, I'm just going to scale this one more time. This time I will uh, use my center snap, and I'm just going to say 0.75 perhaps. Great. So I have now um, this boundary, and I have this interior curve. Now, since I was saying I was going to transform, you know, I've designed this one little part of the component, and from the transform menu, if I say mirror, we can always just mirror it once, mirror it twice, and have the rest of my geometry built out. Obviously, um, based on the exercises that you guys um, just completed, you can always just design one quadrant of your component and then use your mirroring transformations as you just learned um, to actually parametrically define the other three. Um, so you can always just design just this one quadrant and have all three of them updating accordingly. Now this is the basic premise and you know if we said transform and instead I said array polar, right, we can see that by using four items we get a slightly different component. 